Yo, welcome back to Infant Investors, the home for all new and non-investors. I'm Curtis and today we've got another investment video for you and I'm going to be taking you through my take on Free Trade's new 25 stocks. As you guys know, Free Trade will be launching 25, 20 to 25 new stocks on a weekly basis um, and the purpose of this video series is just to take you through my high level analysis, my high level view um, on the stocks that they've introduced and ones that I want to investigate further and potentially um, if they hit all of my boxes um, add to my specific portfolio so if you want to know more please like please comment please subscribe I'm on a mission to get to two and a half thousand subscribers and get the world of investing out to more people in a clear simple and transparent manner but first let me take you through this so for those of you guys that are new um, and are wondering what is this spreadsheet you have on your screen Kurt it's just to let you know um, I created a spreadsheet at the very, very beginning when I started this channel and I've been trying to update it, but to be honest, I don't update all of the information, the templates there, I just update the, the next set of information for the next things that I look at. And then for whatever it is you find interesting, I expect you guys to kind of take it onto your own spreadsheets and then obviously manipulate the information as best as you want. But I literally just have the stock, if it's UK, US, or sometimes I put other categories like ETFs or REITs now, industry, uh, my status, which if it's blank, it's just there. If it's pending, it's something I'm interested in investigating more. And if it's holding, it means I'm actually holding that stock. I put the current price, the future price, and then obviously I calculate the potential share price growth. This tells me whether or not the stock is undervalued or not. Then I put the PEG ratio, which is one of the metrics that's really important to me, is price earnings in relation to growth. Um, then I put the future and performance in terms of earnings and then I put the dividend and sometimes I put comments but to be honest I do need to tidy up this spreadsheet the conditional formatting is wrong in terms of all the all of the colors um, and there's a few things that I just need to kind of tidy up and tweak so I will be probably working on this spreadsheet over the next week and trying to tidy this up a little bit but what I've done recently just to at least get the high level data in there is last week you saw I put new week one and that was last week's free trades new 25 stocks um, and as I mentioned in the video last week as well um, the ones I put in the pending status was Investec, British Land and Landsec Re. those are the ones that you know tickled my fancy is, is probably the best way to put it now what I generally look for is a situation like this a whole sea of green and that's the reason why I put the conditional format in. if I can get a sea of green which basically means on you know four out of four of my key benchmarks are hit then um, it's one worth looking at however I do I am going to show you an example today where there can be a sea of green and actually it's a very very bad investment or I think it's a bad investment personally speaking so this doesn't naturally always indicate that it's a great investment but it's, it at least indicates that it's something worth looking into further where if I see a sea of red or something then I'm not even going to bother spend my time because there's only a certain amount of hours in the day and I'm only one man so I can't really really do that but um, I looked at those um, and to be honest the ones that are tickling me the most <laughs> I don't know why I keep saying that. The ones that are tickling me the most is the REITs at the moment. Um, although Investec is looking decent, I don't know if I really want to bring another financial services or an investment management firm at the moment considering the current climate. But maybe it is a good thing to do considering the current climate. It's something I need to look into. But at the moment, I've already got 20 stocks. And so obviously... Um, any additional stocks I add I want to be very very specific with the stocks that I bring into the portfolio now and not spread myself too thin anyway that was week one go check out last week's video to find out more information in week twos I've added all of the new stocks so we've got BB Aviation SSP Group Unite Group Pennon Group Network International Beasley Deshira Pharmaceuticals HICO Infrastructure IMI Quilter PLC Renishaw CAS Materials Rotalk Electro Comps Trello Oil, Tritax, Big Box, Imarsat, InShape, Shaftesbury, International Public, Sophos Group, Greencoat UK, Hammerson, AJ Bell, AJ Bell, and Close BR Group. So the only one at the current moment um, that is tickling my fancy, so to speak, is Greencoat UK. Uh, and at the moment, uh, it's not a sea of green, but I'm going to show to show you why, for me, it still tickled my fancy. As you guys know, anything green get fund. And what I mean by that is that if it is a green investment, it is something that I probably will give a little bit more um, time 
towards. Um, I do think that naturally the way society is shifting towards more renewable and sustainable energy and just sustainable investments in total, um, I do think um, also that there is a strong correlation between profitability and sustainability. And we've seen that in a few indexes that have shown that a lot of sustainable investments over the past couple of years have been the most profitable, not been profitable, been the most profitable of any sector, um, which is fantastic. I've shared some of that on my Instagram channel uh, before previously. So um, it's something I definitely, you know, it's definitely worth looking at. When I went over to Green Coat UK, obviously it's a UK wind um, renewable energy fund. Um, and one thing that one thing that does attract me is that it pays a sustainable dividend, which is I think five point something five percent. Uh, where am I? it's yeah 5.05 percent so i think five percent is you know a benchmark dividend that is you know definitely 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 um a good a good amount um but one thing that was key is that it's a sustainable dividend increasing in line with rpi so for those of you that don't don't know what rpi is rpi is the retail price index it is one of the metrics that goes in towards inflation so consumer price index being another one um, and effectively what this kind of means is that um, it is an inflation beating or an inflation protected fund so if inflation increases you should expect hopefully that the dividend rate will increase in line with it um, and then that means that you know your money will be worth more if inflation increases and it won't be worth less or, or swallowed up by that so that's quite an important factor which i think is um, really really good but i do still need to do a little bit more um, investigation on this fund specifically and one of the reasons why mm -hmm. is because i already hold trig and a lot of you guys hold trig and what i don't want to do is be in a situation um that i've been previously where when i first started investing i was buying like multiple stocks of the exact same um ethnographic makeup shall we say so take aviva and legal in general aviva and legal in general are both great stocks but they're both very very similar and rather than me spread myself between two stocks i could have just picked one because generally when legal in general seven percent down aviva seven percent down when legal in general are paying uh, whatever percent dividend of either pays or whatever percent dividend maybe sometimes it's a little bit higher um, but generally speaking they have a very very similar performance so if I was to start again, I might say only hold legal in general and not hold Aviva as well. Um, and similar with the banks. So I think, you know, I think it's great to be diversified, but I also don't feel that, you know, buying the exact same type of company uh, multiple times is what you should be doing. And that's the reason why we have ratios, right? We have ratios such as PEG, PE ratio, um, price to book ratio in order to compare different companies in the same sector. So you don't have to buy both Sainsbury's and Tesco if they look the same. You can actually see is Sainsbury's better than Tesco or is Tesco better than Sainsbury's? And that's what you can kind of work out for yourself. So I will do a lot more investigation on Green Coat and it doesn't mean it's a dead cert, but it's definitely one that I think is interesting. And a bad example of all green at the moment is this one called Hammerson. So as you can see, undervalued by 130.39%. There's no PEG ratio, which I will explain why. The future earnings is 61.9% and it's paying a 12.7% dividend. Now that should be green. That is due to my error on the conditional format in which I will fix. But technically, all of the metrics bar PEG ratio is green. So why is Hammerson not a great investment? Well, when we go to Simply Wall Street and we look at it, the first um, red flag for me personally is this graph. This graph has been trending downwards for the past year. Um, and I prefer to see graphs that go up and down or ideally trending upwards. But at least if you see up or downs and then you see some, you know, a, a sort of more of a, a secondary trend that's upwards then that actually shows a bit more progression this one has been trending downwards and i think that basically means this company eventually will wind down and i wouldn't be surprised if maybe they file for bankruptcy or something like that in the next couple of years this is um this is where you know if you look at things like fair value with moderate growth potential, that's not telling you the full picture. Sometimes you have to kind of scrutinize. So what is Hammerson? We create vibrant, continually evolving spaces in and around, in and around thriving cities where people and brands want to be. 
or people and brands want to be online to be honest so that's probably one of the reasons why they're not doing so well but yeah you can see it looks very undervalued um, however they're not making any earnings and that's the reason why their PEG ratio is nowhere to be seen um, because they aren't actually making any earnings now their future performance is 16.19% in terms of growth in earnings based off what they've done last year but um, again who knows um, and then when you scroll down um, their debt situation on their balance sheet just doesn't really, really look good. So they've got a high level of phys physical assets inventory. That's not too bad. If it's a retail company, you can expect them having physical assets in inventory. Their debt is not covered by short-term assets. Assets are 0 0.1 times debt. Now, for me, going into this potential recession, I'm not really trying to get into a company that's got a high level of debt. You know, we spoke about looking at healthy companies recession proof companies potentially for going into a recession and um, this doesn't feel like it hits that criteria now if we look at the debt profile hammerson's level of debt 64.2 percent compared to net worth is higher greater than 40 percent the level of debt compared to net worth has increased over the past five years 53.9 percent to 64.2 percent today debt is not well covered by operating cash flow 3.3 percent less than 20 percent of total debt hammerson is making a loss they're making a loss therefore interest payments are not well covered by earnings and so you know you see this 12.7 percent yield but that is a yield that is primarily due to the fact that their share price is so low and they're they're not profitable and they've been tanking so this is an example where you might see a sea of green but um it actually isn't something that is potentially worth investing uh, in you guys might see something different that i don't see but again this is just my high level analysis just to filter out you know the week from the chaff and you know decide which ones I'm going to investigate more that um that took on my fancy I might as well say it again since I've said it already like three times already um now you know when you look at this there are some other interesting stocks um I think one here is Kaz Minerals you know 171.43 percent 0.5 on the PEG ratio which is fantastic uh 10 future earnings of quite a modest dividend though however again this is this is the same thing that I'm, i mentioned to you before a lot of people have got serious minerals a lot of you guys have got other mining companies um, and it's for you to kind of work out do you want to have three or four mining companies or do you want to just put your pure eggs in one mining company or two mining companies rather than have you know 20 because i bet you the profile for a lot of mining companies will look very very similar so because of that you, the, the the idea should be you know evaluate evaluating one against the other you got ones like here which is cool to plc which is i put investment management but it means they work to do something to do with investments basically 73.81 percent 0.4 percent of the peg ratio growth 39.4 um and an okay dividend at 2.7 percent um but again i personally don't really want to be getting into another financial services company um within this current climate so that's why something i personally avoided but again just because i only see value in green coat in terms of investing it just means i have a very short space limited amount of time you know i i don't have the energy to be researching 25 stocks in full detail so what i do i just pick the stocks that appeal to me straight away um and then obviously I investigate those ones. And if they don't work out, then maybe I might pick the next one. If not, I might just leave it and hold my current investments. You know, sometimes a quote I've heard is that the best investments is the ones that you don't make. You don't have to go into everything. And that's something that you guys should really um, be aware of. Uh, and it's in a very, very important factor. One thing that is not in Green Coat's favor, which I will be clear, is also um, the ongoing charge. So when you um, scroll down to um, their, their expense rate, show and their operating costs the cost of the fund effectively is 1.13 percent i can't remember what it is for trig but i think it's along those nines and if you consider and evaluate this against say the s p 500 that i hold which is 0.07 percent you've now got um you know a very a much more expensive fund versus say the s p 500 which is my best performing fund so it's something to bear in mind and to consider and this is where it goes to do i want to hold trig and green coat or do i want to pick one versus the other or do i want to sell trig and move to green coat or do i want to keep them both and these are the types of questions that you know you know we do the investigation and that is worth um worth uh answering but it seemed to be quite popular in the free trade community 
uh, which is what I looked at uh, before as well. So, you know, it's definitely something worth uh, looking into. But again, just a caveat, this is not constituted as advice. This is just my own take. This is my own criteria. Some of you guys will have a completely different criteria. You will look at metrics that are important to you, not important to me. And also even your take on my metrics, you might have a bit more of a, a lower threshold or a higher threshold. You might expect stocks to have a better PEG ratio than I do, or you might have stocks to be more more undervalued than I do, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, um, just take this with from an informational standpoint, and hopefully you guys can use this information to work out what's best for you. For those of you that are new, I will just give you some rules on the spreadsheet. Do not ask to be invited to the spreadsheet. I'm not being mean, but I will not let you in because I do not want the data manipulated. And obviously, this has got to go out to hundreds, if not thousands, of people. So what that means is you should just either go to file and copy the spreadsheet and then you can download and create your own or um, just copy and paste the information into your own spreadsheet and as I update it just copy and paste the information into your own one um, and then that means you can manipulate that all day long and do whatever it is you you, you guys want to do um, on this current spreadsheet because I've got loads of sections um, obviously there are people always on the spreadsheet as the, at the moment there's anonymous wolf that's on the spreadsheet so um, that naturally that naturally happens but yeah Hope you found this video useful. When Free Trade launched their 25 new stocks each week, I will definitely do my investigation on it. Um, I'll give you guys a bit of insight into my train of thought. Um, so yeah, I hope you found this useful. If you did, please like, please comment, please subscribe. I'm on a mission to get to 2,500 subscribers. Um, so any help in sharing this video, getting the word out, commenting and liking, which will help the YouTube algorithms um, push this video up in the rankings um, and let more people know about it, which will be very, very appreciated. Other than that, take care, have a great weekend. My weekend was good until Adrian did, I don't know what he did with that ball um, and literally just ruined my whole fantasy football performance. But hey-ho, we live to fight another day. Take care, guys. Have a great weekend. Happy investing.